So SMC is uh, recommended in Sahel countries. It includes sulfadoxin, pyrimethamine, SP, and amojacin AQ for children aged 3 to 59 months every month for the four months of the rainy season, which is the transmission season. Protection will be effective for 28 days. It helps to reduce morbid mortality of the disease. And in 2010, MSF started a project, a malaria uh, project in Moisala in the south of Chad. SMC was introduced in July 2012. In 2013, Chad adopted SMC, and according to the Malaria National Control Program, so MNCP as it is called in English, and rolled it out throughout the country starting in the districts where the uh, transmission season is short, that is three to four months. Moisala was not considered as a priority for SMC by the MNCP, uh, where the rainy season will last six, five to six months. However, MSF was allowed to uh, roll out SMC in Moisala, and this authorization was renewed every year up until 2018. In 2019, MS, MNCP considered that it was not eligible for SMC because of the transmission season duration and did not grant us any authorization. In 2020, the WHO allowed the MNCPs to select the uh, guidelines to be applied for the prevention of malaria in their country. MSF is granted the approval for SMC with the recommendation to increase the distribution rounds from June to November and to provide evidence about the efficacy in uh, the, the SMC in the Moisala region. So regarding the SMC strategies that have been uh, deployed in Moisala in 2014, we've had a renewal every year to cover the whole district, four rounds of uh, distribution at one month interval in fixed site, that is mustering villages within a radius of five uh, kilometers. Uh, first of uh, SPAQ dose was given under direct observation, two and third day AQ at home. Based on the uh, recommendation of the MOH in the COVID settings, SMC was made door to door with uh, three successive weeks, five days of distribution, and it was repeated over four months. In 2021, this health district recognized that the strategy is a bit uh, too heavy and, um, and suggested mass distribution in all areas in one shot over three days uh, to be repeated over uh, every month for five months. For the last two years, 2020, 2021, the number of patients with malaria was higher uh, than in the years where SMC was implemented before 2019. The efficiency of SMC was therefore challenged. So as you've heard, after six years of SMC, in 2019, SMC was not allowed and then restarted in 2020. So it's the year without SMC that has helped us that to assess the SMC impact on uh, malaria in Moisala. Uh, we will try to answer two questions. What happened in 2019 without SMC? And what happened in 2020 and 2021 when SMC was reauthorized? Uh, and uh, to carry out this analysis, we've used the weekly data from the MSF programs covering 2014 to 2021 and the monthly data from the National Malaria Control Program from 2014 to 2021. And in order to document the uh, effect of SMC, we described uh, the uh, patterns of uh, malaria for the 2014-2021 period. We've also analyzed uh, the trend with uh, generalized additive models with the quasi-Poisson distribution models over five years, and we made prediction for the following year. SMC was measured as a difference in a percentage between the observed values and the predicted values for the years with and without SMC. 
Malaria cases were defined as children under five had received an anti-malarial treatment in a health center. And for IPD, we're considering children under five who were at the hospital in the malaria unit. So what happened in 2019? That's the question. So no SMC. So what happened in uh, 2019? On this graph, you see the number of uh, malaria cases treated for children under five in the health centers in the Moisala Health uh, area from 2014-2021. In blue, the observed cases, excluding the SMC distribution month, and in red, what was uh, observed during the SMC uh, cycles. So you see the various uh, cycles and a decrease after the starting of SMC, but the beginning of the peak is uh, really high, as well as the end of the peak, where usually there's a rebound in spite of SMC in 2019. A year without SMC, we clearly observed a peak in the number of cases which did not decrease throughout the rainy season. Now, let's consider uh, what happened in terms of uh, hospitalizations with a high seasonality again, a beginning of the uh, peak is really high for the first month of SMC and a rebound at the end of the cycle 2019 without SMC. We also have a peak which remained at a high level throughout the period as opposed to the years where the same as SMC was uh, deployed. But in 2021 and 2020, in spite of SMC restored, uh, the figures remained high. So we wondered whether 2019 had a particular seasonality uh, characteristics. So we observed what wa happened in the neighboring districts where SMC was never implemented. These are the Bijundo and Gandhi districts, as you will see on the graphs. So we compared the monthly trends in Bijondo and Gandhi. The peak is high every year. And in 2019, the trend is the same as the previous years. But if you consider Moisala, you see that the peak is higher in 2019 and remained for a longer period of time. And there's a gradient showing the coverage uh, SM, of SMC in the years when it is implemented, that is the percentage of children who had had SMC. And it seemed that this coverage had an influence quite logically on the number of cases which were reported. Then we tried and uh, imagine what would have, well, try to find out what would have happened in 2019 if SMC had been introduced. So we used the 2014 to 2018 data to make some prediction for 2019 as to assess the possible expected number of cases if SMC had been distributed. In gray, you have the three health districts represented to make a comparison, and in red, the predictions for 2019, and in a lighter uh, red, uh, the uh, prediction uh, difference. Now for uh, Bejondo and Gandhi, in spite of variation of confirmed cases, it's quite up to expectations, while in Moussala, the excess of cases observed in relation to the prediction accounts for 109% of difference, that is an additional 25,000 cases, that is a doubling of the number of cases expected for 2019. We did the same exercise for the cases in hospitalization in the uh, malaria unit. And once again, in 2019, the number of cases in hospitalization is higher than the number of cases expected if SMS, SMC had been in, uh, implemented with a uh, difference uh, to be around 57%. Then we uh, started to focus on 2020 and 2021 when SMC was reintroduced. So we also made a prediction of expected cases with the return of SMC. So the trends are the same. The decrease is not so high because the observed cases are considered as 45% higher as to what could have been expected with SMC. But they're still there uh, below uh, the uh, cases uh, without SMC.
We have also uh, run again the predictions for 2021. Same trend is observed. The number of cases in Moisala are 40 percent higher than the prediction in case of SMC implemented. So SMC is indeed efficient, even though the decrease is not up to expectation, in spite of the introduction of a fifth round in November, while in the two other districts, the uh, trends are up to the predictions, that is, a prediction of number of cases without SMC. Now, regarding hospitalizations for 2020-2021, in 2020, we observed that the number of cases observed was below predictions, while in 2021, hospitalizations were greater than by 10 percent, greater uh, by 10 percent uh, of our predictions. But there are limits to this uh, study, that is, the quality of data and some factors which were not in, taken into account, that is, the uh, rain measured. But we do have some uh, preliminary uh, data as to the effect of SMC on the number of cases, even though at the beginning and the end of the uh, season, the peak does not go down. SMC also had an effect which was lower than what was expected in spite of a fifth round of uh, distribution. So questions remain, that is, for instance, the number and the timing of the round, markers of resistance studies underway showing reassuring results. So we need to challenge again the uh, operational strategy to achieve an, uh, the best possible coverage. SMC is a bit uh, like a long uh, time running, that is, uh, maintain the impetus, have a steady interest and involvement of the various stakeholders to achieve a high coverage rate. And all the challenges related to the organization and the perception of SMC and uh, the challenges that we have uh, highlighted are the planning, which is uh, the uh, very important uh, step, which is uh, in June instead of being prepared in March and April, and it's time consuming. And it involves many different people for the organization from MSF, project team, coordination team, sales and reference, and the MOH, uh, and for whom SM uh, SMC is not in their uh, work plan, and also the inter interaction with the local authorities and the community leaders. The other challenge is the supervision of uh, the distribution activities, which are more difficult because there are many sites to be covered in a short period of time. Uh, because uh, And we've learned from one round to the next, but uh, we're still not up to it. Nevertheless, SMC is recognized as being efficient uh, by the communities, by the health authorities, and by the parents. But it's only one tool amongst many others to prevent malaria and uh, would require additional thinking process on the strategies of implementation to be further improved. We would like to thank all those who were involved in preparing this presentation and working on this uh, uh, study. And thank you for your attention.